Hello, and thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo, and joining us, as he does each and every month, is our Mayor, David Bradley. Mayor, thank you for being with us today. Absolutely, on this beautiful day at PVIC. A beautiful day here, one of the landmarks here in Rancho Palos Verdes. I know a favorite place of yours and mine as well. Absolutely. I mean, the Lighthouse, one of the iconic uh, locations within the city. It can't be more beautiful um, as we enter October. It's uh, you know a nice fall day out here uh, at PVIC. That's right. So many things to get to today. So much city business. But let's talk about that amazing ceremony that we had last month for Councilman Ken Dida, also our city founder. And now we have the Ken Dida Civic Center and Ken Dida Way. Tell us more about that. It was really exciting that we were able to honor uh, almost a living legend with here within the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Ken, uh, on the original city council, had spent years before that with the Save Our Coastline campaign and getting the city ready for its incorporation. And it was only fitting that 49 years later, on the eve of our 50th birthday, that we were able to honor the 17 years that Ken Dida has been on city council as a councilman, as a mayor pro tem, and as a mayor. And that it was just fitting to rename the Civic Center after Councilman Dida um, as he transfers off the city council this December. So uh, just a small way of telling him that the city really um, appreciates his dedication and his tireless service over the last 55, 60 years to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Do you remember the first time you met Ken Dida? I do. I mean, it has to be 25 years ago, um, I think, when I was uh, serving on um, some committee. Um, I met him, I think, here at PVIC, um, and he is just such a wealth of knowledge. I mean, it's almost like uh, talking to a walking, talking, living uh, historic monument. His uh, grasp of what was going on uh, back then in 1972 when the city was being formed, as it relates to to today and the assault on local control that we're seeing coming from Sacramento, uh, a lot of parallels and uh, the city continues to fight for local control, try to um, fight that we should be able to zone and have our own land use policy and it shouldn't be a one size fits all from Sacramento. Um, very similar to what was happening back in the early 70s when it looked like we were going to have a condominium explosion all over Palos Verdes and that it was going to become ultra dense along the coastline um, and the city was founded to try to prevent that and make it as uh, the semi-rural environment that we currently have. Yeah he's really an amazing historian of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes for sure. So it was exciting that uh, Ken Dida was able to have his sister who lives on the east coast out his little sister I think she was immensely proud of her big brother um, uh, Ken's uh, daughter and his son were able to be there along with some extended family so it was really fantastic fantastic that we were able to uh, show the family how much the city uh, appreciates them. The only kind of sad point of it that uh, Ken's wife, who had passed last year, was not able to uh, be with us. But she did know that this was in process, so uh, before she passed, she was able to understand um, how much um, love and appreciation the city has for Councilman Dida. Yeah, and she sacrificed so much, too, because he's been so busy yes. with the city for the last 50 years. I also thought it was so nice that so many former mayors and council people from surrounding cities came out uh, to honor him as well. Absolutely. I mean, it was a kind of a who's who from it the was. South Bay, from a local elected official, Yes. city managers. It was just a heartfelt um, outpouring of support uh, for Councilman Dida. So a really great day. And it was fun. Everybody had a story about Ken that they told, which I thought was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure that we could have gone on for hours yes. and even days telling Ken Dida stories. Right. Um, you know, Ken uh, has a way about him. He does. And uh, there are always stories of uh, your interactions with Ken. Yes. And we hope many more to come. That's for sure. Um, there was some exciting news. Uh, the announcement that you UCLA is purchasing Marymount California University and opening it as a satellite campus. What more can you tell us about that? So yeah, so UCLA was the final down select. So it was a long process from uh, back in April when Marymount California announced that they were going to cease active operations. So during the summer, Marymount was doing a um, down select for qualified bidders. So I believe there were over 110 uh, original interested parties and they necked that down to a handful uh, that they then uh, 
uh, accepted bids on. They evaluated all those bids and they selected UCLA. The interesting thing is I do not believe Marymount went with the highest bid. Interesting. They actually went with what they thought was a market bid, but also something that would fit in with the community going forward. Um, I think they were looking to try to see if they could find another educational institution to take over the property, which has been operated as a as the university for many years. So we're working with UCLA to make sure that it is as compatible as possible with the local neighborhood, uh, with PV Drive East access. Um, and um, we've been discussing it with uh, the chancellor and his staff from UCLA. We don't think that they'll really start major operations for probably 12 to 18 months as they start to ramp up. Um, but there's still a lot of discussions on what exactly is going to be uh, taught at, um, at our campus here, um, whether it's going to be graduate programs, continuing education programs. Uh, but they did purchase both the campus here in Rancho Palos Verdes as well as the residential campus down off of uh, PV Drive North um, in the city of Los Angeles. And of course, some of the most beautiful views. I've always envied the students up oh, there because it it's just amazing. <laughs> I've been up there numerous times. Yeah. And uh, as you sit there and look down at Catalina, it is absolutely stunning views from up there. So I'm sure UCLA is going to make wonderful use out of it. I know UCLA uh, is landlocked in Westwood, so they've been yes. looking at how they can meet their mandate of additional educational opportunities for students. So this is, allows them to continue that because they just can't expand anymore in Westwood. Hopefully it's a win-win for the community, for UCLA, and for the trustees of uh, Marymount, California. Sounds great. Um, public safety is always something that we talk about. Of course, it's very important to the residents. You recently met with the Peninsula Public Safety uh, Committee and Regional Law Committee, Contract Law Committee. Uh, what information can you provide us about projects coming sure. up? Sure. We're continuing to work with our LA County sheriffs to uh, make sure that we have as much coverage as possible uh, to make sure that we're doing traffic calming, traffic enforcement, as well as crime suppression. The LA County Sheriff is is still uh, understaffed, so we can cont uh, continue to work with Lamedia Sheriff Station to make sure that we leverage the best to get the most out of their coverage. Um, but we are actively uh, working with uh, crime suppression. In fact, at the last council meeting, um, Captain uh, Powers gave us an overview of, um, of what's been going on um, and any hot spots over the last quarter, so last three months. We are still one of the safest cities in the state of California, um, but that doesn't mean that we are not continually trying to drive it to zero. We've had some residential burglaries that have been troubling, um, so we continue with um, uh, new and novel implementation. So we're continuing to rely on the ALPR cameras. Uh, we're continuing to help work with the different neighborhoods that want to put in flock cameras. All of these things are tools for the sheriff to help with crime suppression, uh, looking for vehicles that have been tagged as either stolen or being associated with violent felons. Uh, we've had very good success with uh, folks that have been hit with the license plate readers. So it's, it's a good program and it's continuing to pay dividends. We continue to work with LA County Fire for um, additional uh, support. Um, we recently enacted the um, wildfire cameras um, as part of an overall peninsula plan to look and try to identify smoke long before anybody has identified a, a fire source. So this is a artificial intelligence back system that's looking for the uh, multispectral um, uh, image um, for fires throughout the uh, throughout the peninsula. So that will be coming online here in the next year. Um, we got a grant from the uh, state of California to help fund that for all four cities on the peninsula. So that will help us get a jump on any fires um, since we are in a very high fire zone. Hugely important for really the whole state of California. So that's Absolutely. great news. Um, you know, speaking of fires, I know drought conditions continue to play all of California, but really Southern California. During the month of September, RPV residents faced Cal Water Stage 2 water restrictions. What's the latest on the restrictions and how does the city conserve water? So you're absolutely correct. So we went through a two week period where we were not allowed to do any outdoor watering and we were encourage, encouraging all the residents to uh, reduce indoor watering usage. Um, 
That was due to one of the major infill pipes uh, into Los Angeles Basin was under repair. Uh, unfortunately, it happened at one of the most inopportune times Always. Uh, in the middle of summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's just like you can't plan for these things. Um, so we continue to work with Cal Water, our water supplier, uh, for various programs to come in. And uh, they have programs for uh, grass removal to put in more drought tolerant uh, landscaping. They have a program where they'll come in and do a assessment of your outdoor watering uh, and help you find uh, solutions to uh, reduce the uh, number of um, sprinkler heads, the sprinkler head flow rate, uh, putting in automatic timers, um, all of these things can really help us reduce um, our water usage. But it is a major issue within Southern California and California in general. Um, in fact, this morning in the news there was talking about um, reducing our usage of Colorado River water. So between us and uh, Southern California, Arizona and Nevada, um, we're really going to have to figure out how to do more with less. Um, that's another thing where we're continuing to look at um, our water usage uh, for land use. Um, so some of the arena numbers and some of the density um, that are trying to impose into the uh, South Bay, um, we're wondering how we're going to get water to do any of those kind of unfunded mandates from Sacramento. So all of those things uh, contribute to water usage. And we're, we're actively trying to work with Cal Water um, um, and the water suppliers here uh, to mitigate. And I think we all have to really do that in our own way as well, because you'll turn the tap on and forget about it and realize, turn it off when you're brushing your teeth or oh, absolutely. what have you. Yeah, um, one of the things uh, my family we've done is we uh, have a bucket in our shower that we will fill up as we are warming the water up in the morning. And then I use that to uh, water some of our potted plants That's outside. great. So, uh, you know, little things like that, yep. you know, uh, you say five gallons here, five gallons there, multiplied by a couple million people, all of a sudden you're starting to talk real change. Yeah, every so those little bit counts. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, the next one is the city council received an update on the future of the beloved Hitano farm. What's happening with the farm in the efforts to make that a historical landmark? So we applied to the state for historic um, designation. We are still trying to work with the uh, federal government to see if we can get a historic designation. Hatano Farms doesn't really fit the definition that the National Park Service looks at for a historic designation, but we're still trying to work with them because we do think it's an exceptional property and an exceptional idea where we can preserve living history. You know, we have a beautiful plaque down in San Pedro, actually on Terminal Island for the Japanese fishing village that was down there. But it's just a plaque. I mean, it's not a piece of living history. We have the opportunity here to turn the Hatano farm, the, really the last operating farm from the Japanese American heritage, into a living, working property to show our students, you know, what it was like for the Japanese American farmers in the 30s, 40s, and 50s that were um, farming here on the peninsula. And it's just a tie back to our living history. Um, so it's both history, education, as well as a honoring um, of our uh, of those that came before us. And once again, the views from there are also spectacular. Oh, it, 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 you know, it, it, you go up there and as a farmer, I don't think you could You couldn't possibly, get a lot of work done, right? Oh, absolutely. I would always be looking out at the ocean. So absolutely. I'd probably be falling down the hill as well because I'd always be distracted. Uh, yes. Yeah, another just stunningly beautiful piece of property. Uh, fortunately, we are blessed with many vistas many. like that. Yes. Um, so it, it, it's hard to pick one out. But, you know, every time we do one of these um, city talks. We've been trying to do it at different places sure. around uh, RPV. Mm -hmm. uh, just another beautiful place. Absolutely. Uh, Rancho Palos Verdes was awarded nearly $10 million in the ARPA funds, which stands for the American Rescue Plan Act. The city council reviewed the 2022-23 plans for the funds. How is that money being allocated? So we're allocating it throughout the city for various projects. So this was uh, rescue plan funds that uh, uh, from the federal government that we're using to help for beautification within the city and other various projects. It's just a great way to to give back um, and continue to improve the city. So we're uh, doing the rehab along Silver Spur. Um, we're uh, improving some of our playgrounds and various other projects. That right.
I don't think p- people think about that too much because everything's always done and looks fantastic but the money does have to come from somewhere right and and this is an opportunity to help with the beautification within the city and some of our capital improvement projects so we're putting it to good use and uh, we will continue to uh, work to uh, make Rancho Palos Verdes as uh, beautiful as uh, possible as it stays that's for sure and I know the September 6th meeting the City Council um, received an update from Caltrans on the proposed Western Avenue bicycle yep. and pedestrian improvement project Um, Where is the city's plan to improve that? Where does it stand? So, in fact, the last city council meeting, on our first city council meeting of October, we talked about the Western Avenue beautification plan and um, actually the Western Avenue improvement plan, which is kind of three prongs. Uh, We're looking to improve the traffic flow. Right. Uh, We're looking to do the beautification, and we're also um, looking for economic development. So the three things we're doing for Western Avenue. Traffic flow, we're working with Caltrans in the city of Los Angeles to try to synchronize the signals. I don't know that putting in a bike lane, um, as is currently proposed, is the right thing. One of the ideas that Caltrans has is reducing the lanes from uh, 12 feet wide to 11 feet wide to be able to accommodate the bike lane. Um, I think that's going to further constrain traffic along Western uh, going in absolutely the wrong direction. So we're trying to push back a little bit on Caltrans to have them come up with a more holistic look um, on that corridor, help us with synchronizing signals, uh, getting uh, updated Uh, technology to allow the signals to be uh, synchronized at different times during the day because as Ponte Vista comes online uh, later this year and into next year traffic getting out of the western corridor down to PV Drive North and then getting on to the Harbor Freeway is going to become even more congested so we're really committed to helping traffic improvement along there. Uh, we're also doing beautification of the walls and medians uh, in our portion of this of the Western Avenue corridor, but also working with LA City and Caltrans to make sure that we have a global approach to that corridor and really looking at everything from um, the PV Drive North to Western Avenue intersection all the way back to 25th and Western to, to look at it as an entire project through that uh, major arterial road. Like you said, that's a, such a busy area anyway. So, And the last thing is we're trying to uh, help spur some economic development along there. We think that the beautification um, as well as some push towards economic development, we can help bring some more businesses in there. Some of the businesses in there have, uh, during COVID, uh, did not fare well. Uh, Murray Calendars has been empty. Uh, the original Murray Calendars site has been empty for about two and a half years. Um, and a couple of the other shopping centers along that corridor um, are less than full. So we're working with the uh, landlords and seeing how we can uh, help the redevelopment of that area and economic uh, infusion. Get some new businesses in there for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we always keep you busy here in the city of RPV. Yes. Uh, tell us about some of your mayoral activities. Um, So, yeah, so there's a lot of things going on. Uh, We're continuing to work on plans for Portuguese Bend uh, landslide remediation. We had the opportunity to talk to uh, State Senator Ben Allen last week about state funding to help with that project. Uh, We will be sitting down with uh, State Assemblyman uh, Al Mirachucci next week to talk about that. Uh, We've sat down with uh, Congressman Ted Lieu to talk about it. Um, Recently, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein's office has provided uh, some federal seed money to help with the Portuguese Bend uh, remediation. Uh, But we're looking for sources to come up with a comprehensive solution to Portuguese Bend, both for the locals. residents there, as well as uh, travelers along uh, Palos Verdes Drive South. Most people have seen, may not know, that there's two forced sewer mains that run along the top of PV Drive South. Could be a major issue if those ever cracked. Um, Unfortunately, these things have a tendency to break at the worst possible time. So it's usually Sunday night (laughs) um, at midnight on a three-day weekend. (laughs) So we're really making uh, strides to see what we can do to provide a long-term solution for the stabilization of the roadbed as well as the forced sewer main along PV Drive South. And that's been such a, a hot bed, bed for years and years and years. It really needs to be addressed all the time. So right. It's, it's a multi-pronged plan that we have. Um, you know, 
you know, a couple things is you need to identify where the water's coming from. Right. You need to turn the water faucet off. You need to drain the bathtub. And then you need to prevent water from coming back in. So we are looking at all four of those uh, portions of the plan. Uh, we think we have the best of current geological uh, assessment and ideas to be able to bring the water out. Um, as opposed to in the past, we've used uh, electric fed pumps. We're trying to look at gravity fed uh, horizontal wells this time and see what we can do to stabilize that area. Um, we've seen some success uh, in the Abalone Cove area with stabilizing that area with uh, the vertical wells. Uh, and we're looking to uh, extend that um, into Portuguese Bend or re-extend it um, and do it in a way this time that the uh, dewatering wells won't be sheared off and then do some real fixes to prevent uh, water intrusion percolating back into the slip plain. An ongoing project for sure. And Mayor, um, we talked about the Ken Dider renaming, which yes. was really the kickoff yes. to the city's 50, 50th birthday anniversary party that we're having here all year. Yeah, and so we'll be doing a different uh, fun event. You go to the city's website and look at the uh, different events that we're doing every uh, month. Uh, the Harvest Festival, I believe, is this month. But we will be doing a major event every month for 12 months. Ken Dida renaming for the Civic Center was our first kickoff. But yeah, so it's going to be be a fun year getting up to our birthday party that we'll be having at Terranea in uh, September of uh, 2023. It will be very exciting and hopefully a lot a large portion of the city comes out to uh, celebrate the incorporation of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes in 1973. Amazing. It's, a, it's been an amazing 50 year ride. The city is doing amazingly well. We came out of COVID in a financial position that that was almost uh, unprecedented with uh, cities our size. Um, that was due to uh, very sound budgeting and financial management. But yeah, the city right. uh, coming into its second 50 years is looking as bright as ever. And as part of that, um, the folks around the city should also see uh, some new signage. That's right. So we've, uh, you know, as part of the 50th year campaign, we are updating our signage and uh, making it a little bit more modern and a little bit more uh, with a little bit more pop. So as we continue, uh, we'll uh, we'll see that uh, incorporate the same RPV logo but yes. into a uh, new modern design uh, that is uh, uh, intended to be much more weather tolerant and long term. They look amazing actually. Um, so the Harvest Festival will be on Saturday, October 22nd. Yep. Anybody wants to come out from 12 to 4 and that'll be a lot of fun. Of course, anything else you wanted to mention today? I think the next big thing that we have is just the uh, general election coming up here That's in November. Right. Yes. So we have three open seats on the RPV City Council. Two of us are one running for a re-election, myself and Mayor Pro Tem Barbara Ferraro. Um, unfortunately, uh, Ken Dida has been termed out, uh, but um, after 49 years on council uh, at various times, plus the time that he dedicated before the city yes. was incorporated, I think it's time for Ken Dida to, t uh, to have a well-deserved rest. So. He does. He deserves a nice retirement, Mayor. Yes. So uh, his retirement is going to be the 50th year celebration of the city that he helped found. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us as you do every month. We sure appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much for hosting Absolutely. at this beautiful day yes. here at Point Vicente. It's a great way to start the day. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll See you next time on City Talk.